accept the, the, the possibility of them having a line. It's like, okay, well, you published some stuff, so you know what goes into publishing something. We'll give you Marvel Knights. They gave Brian Polito a little line. Absolutely. And I was shocked looking at this that it's a 1994 date. I was thinking it was like 1996, but yeah, we see this issue in Wizard at that time. But they really get into this a little bit early. And part of why that surprises me is I think the production values are pretty exceptional for 1994. Yeah, they, like, uh, the bells and whistles and the filters and stuff. Uh, I think he left enough stuff open that the, co the colors could do some things to, to get it to make sense. Like, you, you, see it, you see it on the cover, I guess, like muscles and stuff. Like, they do enough there. That was, that was always interesting to see. Yeah, it's, it's one of those things that I think today you'll see, well, for years, you'll see colors fighting the line art. In this case, doing a pretty good job with it, you know, really following what he lays down and sets up. And I like that kind of just open design. You saw this in black and white, I think it would be pretty cool too. Yeah. So, the idea of a firefighter superhero, kind of brilliant. That's a very easy sell, you know, if you're doing your one sentence pitch or whatever, that's an easy one to understand. So it would be Wizard Magazine number 37, which is NP's first, uh, first wizard, the Rob Liefeld one. Uh, there is an article with Zada and Palmiotti about event comics and things, and they go through the process, and this spread, they show it on little post-it notes, sketches and stuff, and how they... Kasada further develops it in pencils and stuff, so I actually never really seen the uh, the final art until uh, checking out this comic. And backdraft. So we, we this so that's, that's like DC did have a firefighter character. It wasn't a superhero, it wasn't a super firefighter, but like back in the Golden Age, they did have a recurring firefighter comic within their, their anthologies. And this is our hero, Ash. Yeah. 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 It's a meatball. Still alive, barely. And uh, you see the firefighter. He's one of ours. You know, so they're rushing him up to uh, do what they can for him. Doesn't look very helpful with this image, you know. Oh, sun, sunburn. I like the lettering effects, too. In some ways, it, it calls to mind. Workmen. Yeah, yeah, workmen. Uh, some of the work of Howard Chaykin. Uh, you know, like American Flag, where you repeat the lettering to almost this graphic effect. Right.
resisted and resisted. It is interesting what he did, because look how early this is. That's what I'm saying. It's like issue 12 or 13. and shit that are being built before issue one even comes out. So you, Dude, you see what the name of the game is. A lot of money. 150 bucks. Uh, so there you go. There you have it. I mean, it was a, it was a big part of the culture. Like, like the Randy Bowen statues kind of prime the hook for that. And Bowen would put out something new like every month. So, and people, you know, there was that last case at Ives where they would just say, let's be the next, next new one, man. And somebody would buy them. It was all part of the, 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 the 90s business model. I would always see, like, when I was always have, like, the defense screen or the photograph or something with a film. And the show was part of the show. It was like, so, yeah, like, you're, you're in business for yourself now. You can try to make, uh, keep the lights on anybody. But so, it's, it's a comic I wanted to look at for a while just because I think it's really positioned in that 90s. Again, Speculator Bubble is bursting at this point, and this has to be considered a launching point, I think, for Marvel Knights. Uh, <laughs> look at this, man. You could barely read the Event Comics company logo. You can barely read the Ash logo from any kind of distance. This is what you would hear so many guys complain about comic shop owners i think eric larson has gone on record about like how logos should be presented mm -hmm. yeah and and uh, you don't get something at this kind of juvenile level if you're not doing your first one yourself you know publishers that are established would not allow such a thing because like okay yeah you did something a little new a little different well sometimes the steering wheel is where it should be you think it, it's a new generation making their their own rules and their own aesthetic a lot of the desktop publishing stuff too of the early 90s yes. design where it, like comics is just just shrunk you know horizontally yeah. shrunk until like those letters are four times wider than they are tall it looks powerful